7.1 Modeling with Differential Equations We're going to start off by talking about models of population growth. And one possible model for the growth of a population is that the population grows at a rate proportional to the size of the population. For this model, we can define t to be the time and p to be the size of the population, meaning that the rate of growth, or dp dt, the rate of change of the population with respect to time, equation dp dt equals kp, because we're saying that the population is growing at a rate that's proportional to the initial population, where k is a proportionality constant. This is a differential equation because it has an unknown function p and its derivative dp dt. Consequences of this model, the equation shows that p prime of t or dp dt is greater than zero so that the population is always increasing, assuming that we roll out a population of zero. In fact, as the population increases, dp dt becomes larger. So the growth rate increases with the population, which makes sense. Direct substitution shows that P equals CE to the KT is a solution of the differential equation, and later we will show that there is no other. So what we're saying here is just P prime of T, C, here's our baby, the derivative of E to the box is E to the box times the derivative of the box is just k, because we're taking the derivative with respect to t, so t is our only variable here. And that is the same thing as, well, this whole thing was just p, so that is k p. And so that's what we're saying. This is dp dt equals k p. This is one particular solution of it, and we're going to show that there is no other Allowing C to vary leads to the family of solutions shown on the next slide, and the only physically meaningful solutions are those with C is greater than zero for T is greater than or equal to zero, because again, we want P prime of T to be greater than zero. Putting T equals zero gives P is zero, which equals C E to the K times zero, just because we're sticking in a zero everywhere for the T, and that just equals C. So it turns out that C is our initial population. In figure one, we see the family of solutions of dp dt equals kp, but of course we're only going to look at the ones where c is greater than zero, and that brings us to figure two of the family of solutions that makes sense in this problem. Now we're going to look at the logistic equation. The preceding model is appropriate if resources are unlimited, but that's not usually the case. A more realistic model is based on the assumption that the population levels off as it reaches its carrying capacity. Okay, so what I'm trying to say there is it doesn't really usually make sense that population is just going to grow and grow and grow without bound. Usually we're going to hit some maximum where it's going to level off after that. And so we say in the logistic growth model that dpdt is equal to kp, which we had in the last example, if the population is small. So initially we grow really fast at an exponential rate, but then dp dt is less than zero if p becomes greater than k. So if the population is greater than some cap k we have. We can incorporate both assumptions using the equation dp dt equals kp times 1 minus p over k. Note that if p is small compared with k, all right, so make p be really small and k be huge. Well, if p is small and k is huge, isn't this going to be close to zero? A small number over something huge is about zero. And so we would just get dp dt equals kp right there. But if p is huge compared with k, then 1 minus something huge over something small is going to be still something huge. So 1 minus something huge is going to be a negative number. And so if p is greater than k, then dp dt is negative or less than zero. 
So dpdt equals kp times 1 minus p over k is a logistic equation. For now, we can simply look at the sine of dpdt to see how the solution approaches the equilibrium solution p equals 0 and p equals k. And by equilibrium solutions, I just mean that the derivative equals 0. That's where it levels off. So we see a leveling off at p equals 0 and at p equals k. So we see that it's like an exponential model at the beginning and then it levels off. As p approaches k, dp dt approaches zero, meaning the population is leveling off there. The motion of a spring, we also need to consider the motion of a mass m at the end of a vertical spring as shown in the figure. If the spring is attached or compressed x units from its natural length, then by Hooke's law, the spring exerts a force proportional to x. And so we say its restoring force is negative kx. It's exerting a force that is proportional to x. Here, the spring constant k is positive, ignoring external forces. Then Newton's second law gives us m times the second derivative equals negative kx, and this is a second order differential equation because it involves a second derivative. What can we guess about the form of the solution of this equation? We see that the second derivative of x is proportional to x, but has the opposite sign. What are two functions with these properties, sine and cosine? In fact, all solutions of the equation can be written in terms of sines and cosines. Not surprisingly, the spring will oscillate. Isn't that what the sine and the cosine function looks like? We don't need to know that much about the motion of a spring, but it's just kind of cool to look at it and look at the derivative and the second derivative and kind of see what the function would look like from those properties. And um, we see the sine and the cosine right there, and I just think it's neat. We don't need to know it that much, but... In general, a differential equation is an equation that contains an unknown function and one or more of its derivatives. The order of a differential equation is the order of its highest derivative that occurs in the equation, and so that's why when we took the second derivative, we called it a second order differential equation. A function f is a solution of a differential equation if the equation is satisfied when y equals f of x and its derivatives are substituted into the equation. So we saw in the population growth model that p equals ce to the kt was a solution to dp dt equals kt. To solve a differential equation is to find all possible solutions of the equation. So what we've done before, the general solution of y prime equals x cubed is given by y equals 1 fourth x to the fourth plus c. In this first example, they want us to show that y equals 2 thirds e to the x plus e to the negative 2x is a solution of this differential equation here. So all we do is we use this y equals equation to kind of prove this part here. So what do I mean? If y equals 2 thirds e to the x plus e to the negative 2x, then we need to first find y prime, right? Because we want to find what y prime plus 2y is, that part. We want to prove that it's equal to the 2e to the x. So let's try and evaluate this. So what is y prime? y prime equals the derivative of 2 thirds e to the x is just 2 thirds e to the x plus, and to take the derivative of e to the negative 2x, there's my baby, I need to chain it. e to the negative 2x times negative 2. So I'm just going to rewrite that as y prime equals 2 thirds e to the x minus 2 e to the negative 2x. So now let's go over here and do our problem. So y prime, that's what we just found, 2 thirds e to the x minus 2e to the negative 2x, so that's y prime, plus 2y. So what is 2y? Well, that's 2 times this. That's our y, 2 times 2 thirds e to the x plus e to the negative 2x. So that's that part. And so let me just go ahead and simplify. I'm going to just distribute this to, so I get 4 thirds e to the x plus 2e to the negative 2x 
Now I have two thirds of these plus four thirds of these. That leaves me with six thirds of the e to the x's and then minus two of them plus two of them, that cancels out. And what is six thirds? That is two, e to the x. Oh yay, I just proved it. And that's all I need to do. Initial value problems? In many physical problems, we need to find the particular solution that satisfies a condition of the form y of t naught equals y naught, and that's just our initial condition. The problem of finding a solution to the differential equation that satisfies the initial condition is called an initial value problem. In this example, we want to show that all members of the family of functions, so this is the y equals part, is a solution of the differential equation y prime equals negative y squared. So this time I'm going to use this equation here to figure out what my y prime is. So y equals 1 over x plus c. I actually want to write that as x plus c to the negative 1 because it's going to be easier to take a derivative that way. So then I need to find y prime because it's asking me that here. So I get negative. Remember this is my baby, right? is this whole thing to the negative one power. So negative x plus c to the negative two, and then I gotta chain it. The derivative of x is just one, plus the derivative of c, which is a constant, is zero. So I am basically left with negative x plus c to the negative two. So that's my y prime. Okay, so I need to show that y prime is equal to negative y squared. So we just found y prime. And what is the negative y squared? Negative y squared is just negative 1 over x plus c squared, right? Which is negative 1 over x plus c squared. So y prime, y prime equals negative 1 over x plus c squared, that's what that is, is equal to what I found above, y squared. Proved. Done. Find a solution of the initial value problem, y prime equals negative y squared, what we just found, where y is 0 equals 0.5. So here's my y equals equation. All I have to do is find y is 0 equals 0 0.5. What is y is 0? You just put in a 0 for your x. So that's 1 over 0 plus c. In other words, 1 over c. And why don't I write the 0. 0.5 as 1 half? Because look, when does 1 over c equal 1 half? When c equals 2. So pretty much that's my answer right there. I have y equals 1 over x plus 2. So you're gonna see a lot of applications in this section, but the two main things to remember are that population um, can be modeled by CE to the KT and population growth can be modeled by KP. So that's a major thing to remember from this section. And also we wanna know the logistic equation, DP, DT equals kp times 1 minus p over k. And this is logistic growth. Also just remember that equilibrium solutions means that the derivative equals 0 where it's flattening out. And those are the main things that you need to take away from this section and you'll see a lot more in the homework. That's it for this lesson.